So yesterday, there were a lot of announcements for uh, E3, and Lloyd and I did a whole bunch of, as well as other community members, uh, we did a whole bunch of watching it live and talking about it in our community Discord. There is a link in the description down below. Uh, we have this channel card called The Arcade where we can have a conversation with you guys, so make sure that you join so that next time we do that kind of thing, you can participate in it because we had a lot of fun. Um, we were we're going to start with the um, Square Enix stuff, and then we're going to move on to the Xbox stuff. Uh, let's start with Square Enix. What was the the big takeaway for you, Lloyd, from Square Enix? Well, the biggest game shown off at all of E3 so far for me was the Guardians of the Galaxy game uh, from the uh, D Deus Ex de development team at uh, Square Enix. And it just looks amazing. It looks like everything I've ever wanted from a Marvel game. Uh, you you play a single player game where you're Peter Quill. Uh, you have the rest of your team with you so you can talk to Gamora and Rocket and Groot and Drax. Um, but it's not a standard a game like, say, Marvel Ultimate Alliance where you're switching between characters. You are always Peter Quill, but your interactions with the very various team members will do different things. Uh, we saw during the event they had uh, someone or i guess drax picked up rocket and was throwing him across a, a chasm because there had they had hit a button and uh you could you could side either with rockets so that you don't want him to get thrown or you could side with drax because you want rocket to get thrown and then uh rocket's getting tossed peter quill says don't worry you're an animal you'll land on your feet he doesn't he face plants and then you see this thing pop up at the top left saying rocket will remember that he's upset about being tossed and it's like oh my god it's taken like the telltale games kind of um relationship management and putting it in a game where it's all about big um big egos big personalities and a lot of infighting and it just looks like everything i've wanted from uh, not only a marble game but just a single player action adventure game. This is everything that I wanted. So I'm so excited for Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I thought the combat looked really cool too. Like um you you can you obviously like hit a button, I'm guessing one of the triggers and that slows combat down for a second and then you mm -hmm. can issue orders to your team and if you like I my wife and I sat down and rewatched the Guardians of the Galaxy thing yesterday because she's a huge Guardians fan. Right. And the thing that we noticed is there's banter. Like, first off, there's banter through the whole uh, demo, but there's also oh. banter during combat. Like, right. uh, Peter is telling Rocket to do something. Rocket is, you know, barking back at him saying, I don't think so. You can hear Groot yelling, I am Groot in the background over <laughs> and over and over again. This yeah. game, the, the graphics look really good. Uh, but overall, I love the way that the game looks to play. And I really like the that they're they're going after like the comic book stuff and not trying to mimic what we see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because yep. as somebody who never really got into comics, but I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe, all of this stuff is new to me. Everything is a surprise. And I, I, I'm very, very excited about this game. 100%. Uh, I, just exactly what you said. They're taking the... the many many decades of comics uh they're making their own story but based in that world and the only thing they're really taking from the mcu is the fact that peter quill likes 80s music yeah. and that is a huge portion of this game where you you heard a bunch of really great 80s tracks and then kind of the culmination of the battle that they showed off was i guess kind of your super yet you, you held up your little your little walkman and you started playing some joan jet and then everybody is shooting to the beat of the song it, it just it just looked so good. I had a dumb smile on my face the whole entire time that they were showing this game off. I'm so glad that the arcade is only audio because there'd be all sorts of clips that I don't want people to see. <laughs> all right, so we talked about something that we were very excited about. I want to move on to something that we thought we were excited about, and then we were very disappointed. Square <laughs> Enix raised and dashed my hopes in one fell swoop. It was incredibly fast and very uh disappointing and I, I i even saw some other people reacting exactly the same way that i reacted so what they did is they said we are going we are we are re-imagining uh, final fantasy one through six and they did this oh. one two three four five six and i was like yes and then yep. they said for steam and mobile 
<sighs> and I was so disappointed and sad and, uh, you know, a single tear probably uh, eked its way out of my <laughs> face and splashed upon the ground with a heavy thud. Right. So disappointing. What are your thoughts on that? A hundred percent the same as you. I was super excited. I had heard, um, I don't know, a couple months ago that there was a chance of a Final Fantasy remaster, like the the early pixel games. Um, and there was talk that it was coming to the Nintendo Switch. So what my secret hope is, is that they showed this off at their event and then they're saving the big news, which is this remake or this this collection of six remakes uh, is coming to Switch as a, as a package where you buy it and you get all six games. Uh, obviously that hasn't been announced, so I can't say yay square you did an amazing thing but man like all, all of the ports for smartphones of the final fantasy games are pretty bad like mm -hmm. the the fonts the uh the redone sprites with weird graphical effects put on them they're just not good representations of these old games so i have almost no interest for these uh but my fingers are crossed that we'll get a console port of all of these as well maybe singly or as a package because i would buy the heck out of this Absolutely. I that, That's definitely what I was hoping for. The idea that it's not coming to consoles is very disappointing. Maybe they're holding out for uh, Nintendo's presentation on Tuesday, but I don't think so. I think that they are just bringing it to Steam and to yep. mobile. And how much is this going to cost? I'm going to guess it's going to be 15 <laughs> bucks. Like the like all of Square Enix's mobile ports are very expensive. And if you buy yeah. it for the... I don't, I don't know if it's still the case, but it used to be the case that if you bought it for the phone you would have to buy a separate instance of it to play it on your iPad. It's not like you would buy it once and then own it on both, which is ridiculous. Anyway, right. that was really, really disappointing. Um, anything else that you want to take 30 seconds to talk about for Square Enix before we move on to what I think was the biggest announcement so far, Xbox? Yeah, they, they showed off the uh, Black Panther stuff for Marvel's Avengers. I'm still really excited for the Marvel's Avengers 2.0 when they kind of add the the live service stuff back in where you can kind of just wander around, um, jump into quick fights. Uh, but the Black Panther stuff is going to be a separate story that's going to be um, DLC that you get for free because you bought the game. I can't wait to play through that stuff. Absolutely. And I, I'm this close to buying it again. I don't need to. I got plenty of games to play, but I, I'm this close close to buying it because of the that new open world thing where you can just keep fighting the new randomized bosses and stuff. I think yeah. that's really cool. So maybe I'll end up picking it up and you can teach me how to play. All right. Awesome. Let's move on to the Xbox announcements. This was unbelievable. I think it was, what, an hour and a half of just there were 30 games. 27 of them are are all Game Pass games, which means right. that if you subscribe to Game Pass, you're getting almost everything that was announced at E3 from Microsoft so far. And there was a yeah. lot of really, really cool stuff. Because there's so much, I feel like we could we should you and I should each just pick three things and we talk about <laughs> okay. those three things. Does that sound fair? Yeah, sounds good. All right. Uh let you go first. What's the first thing that you want to talk about for this? Um, weird media tie-ins. Uh, they showed off two games that had weird media tie-ins. Mm. I guess I'm kind of cheating because I'm talking about two games, but I'm talking about okay. uh, Captain Jack Sparrow coming to Sea of Thieves, uh, a game that I'd love to play, but I that I would love to play. Sorry, but I hate uh, griefing. If they had um, play PV PVE servers, I would be all over that game. But I might have to jump in to check out the Captain Jack stuff. That looks pretty cool. And then right on the other end of the um, of the scale, you have Top Gun content with Maverick with the Top Gun theme with taking off from an aircraft carrier in a fighter jet coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is also coming to Xbox Series X. Two things that I never thought would happen. Yeah, I, I agree. I never thought those things would happen. I definitely don't really care all that much about the Sea of Thieves thing, only because there's it's not. If they had like uh, a, a single player version of that or a co op only version of that, I would play the hell out of it. But I'm not interested in that. Um, the the Microsoft Flight Simulator, not a game for me, but oh my god, that was beautiful, yeah. absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Like when we were watching it on the Twitch stream, everything was kind of lossy because it's this crappy 1080p thing at 6,000 kilobits per second really really not not a great um example and we were still kind of in awe and then watching 
the YouTube video after the fact where it's been yeah. uploaded and processed and it's had time to really uh, shine. Uh, wow, that game is beautiful. And it, I love, I, I didn't realize how iconic that Top Gun sound was because when it oh. happened, both you and I at the same time, we were both like, is that Top Gun? And we yeah, knew it like instantaneously the, and that surprised me. The first chord, the hair on the back of my neck stood up because uh -huh. it is such a powerful, like that is, I, I bought, when I bought my new stereo, like when I was really, really young, got my first job, blew my first big check on this new stereo with huge ass speakers for my tiny room, I was an idiot. But the first thing I did was I played a copy of Top Gun cranked as high as it could possibly go. And it it's such an iconic theme. And to have that in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is a game that doesn't have fighter jets that, that shoot things down. Um, not that there's gunplay in this. They, they obviously didn't show that out. But that was not what I expected. But man, it's amazing how, as you said, one little beat of a song can just bring everybody's ears up or perk up and everybody gets excited again for what's on the screen. So I can't wait to see more of that add-on that's coming later this year, close to when the actual new um, Top Gun movie is coming out. All right, let's move on to another thing that I, or the a thing that surprised me how excited I was about it. <laughs> I had seen, like, obviously I was irritated with EA for their shenanigans where they did an hour-long countdown to a five-minute video that showed no gameplay <laughs> and i was like yeah. wow that was really disappointing for battlefield 2042 but then they showed gameplay in um uh, in the xbox conference and i have to admit i've never played well that's not true i played battlefield 1942 on my xbox 360 right. a million years ago um but i haven't played any battlefield games since then so I, I had absolutely no expectations to being excited about this. What I saw for Battlefield 2042 uh, playing on, they showed it off on the Xbox Series X uh, with mm -hmm. 100, 180 people, I think was the number of people that were in the match at the time. Yeah. That blew me away. That absolutely blew me away. The graphics were amazing. The gameplay looked incredible. Yeah. I am absolutely floored and very excited for battlefield 2042 now i'm not going to pre-order it because there's rumors that it's going to come to game pass for 10 days for us to like try it out for 10 days and so i'll yep. be able to try it out and then make a decision afterwards um what what were your thoughts on battlefield 2042 it it looks ridiculous like the the graphical improvement from the last battlefield to this one is it's insane you're you had these uh, soldiers running off the the top of a building and there's this huge sandstorm coming in and it's fully modeled in this huge environment that you can see for miles off this building and then it's like okay that's cool but that could just be i don't know an animation that it's playing just outside the skybox it could be something weird they could be faking it uh and then they showed little mini tornadoes that are happening all around the fights and they're throwing objects and things are breaking and there's sparks and there's flames and there's dust and there's just all this other crap it happening in the world that isn't you running around with a gun and breaching walls and doing all that crazy stuff which also looks fantastic mm -hmm. um they, they've taken every part of the game and just uh, cranked up the graphical fidelity to 11 and it looks like it could be a really fun hugely massively multiplayer um battle scene uh playing out when you play this game and same with you. I'm waiting for the uh, the 10 day demo on Game Pass to see if this is a game I'll be playing long term. Yeah. All right. What's your next game? Uh, we've each gone with one. So what's your next one that you wanted to talk about? The next one, they didn't really show off much of the game. And uh, the reason why I liked it is because they didn't show off much of the game. And that was the amazing, honest trailer for The Outer Worlds 2. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite games uh, <laughs> that came out last year. Uh, this trailer was fantastic because it's everything that happens. They're, they're talking about, oh, and here's a big scene. And look, it's a silhouette of our hero. But you can't see his face because the artists haven't drawn it yet. Mm -hmm. And it just goes on how the modern trailer is made. Um, obviously, we, we got some graphics. We got some video. We got some content of what the, the future Outer Worlds is going to be. Uh, but I'm just happy that I'm getting more Outer Worlds because that game was fantastic. I loved how they just they took everybody to task and made fun of everybody and did it in a way that was also self-deprecating at the same time. I thought it was great. 
Um, yep. I was very surprised because the first one was only two years ago. Yep. So it, it really surprised me that they're making another one this quickly. But at the same time, I feel like they they've earned my trust. They did a great yeah. job last time. I'm just going to assume that they're going to do a great job this time as well. And I think that's another Game Pass game, right? Yes. Yep. It yeah, is. So definitely we don't even have to buy it, which is amazing. It's ridiculous. All right. Um, this one again, it's weird. I'm, I'm going for the shooters um, of shooters that I've not really had much experience with. I've played about 10 minutes of Halo in my entire mm -hmm. life and seeing the multiplayer like the, the the multiplayer gameplay that they showed off for Halo Infinite yeah. blew my mind. Like the moment when uh, he's shooting, he was shooting at somebody, and then he uses a grappling hook to grab the pistol out of the guy's <laughs> hand that he just killed. Yeah. He then he then equips that pistol and then shoots the next person, and then yeah. another time he he did the same thing where he grabbed like a blade. And then was able to mm. melee somebody that was coming towards them. Yep. There's some really impressive gameplay moments that that are happening in that. And I'm assuming that that was. I mean, it, it's it looked like gameplay to me. It didn't yeah, look they, like they, pre-rendered nonsense. They said for the multiplayer stuff that it was gameplay or captured on Xbox Series X, I believe mm. is what they said. Uh, the previous trailer was for the story, which was all pre-rendered stuff. Um, I, I think the biggest takeaway for Halo Infinite is multiplayer is completely free to play. You'll be able to download it. You have you just need to own an Xbox. You don't even have to have Game Pass. You'll be able to download the multiplayer component of Halo Infinite and, and play on PC, play, play on the cloud, play on your Xbox and jump into just an amazing multiplayer game and uh they they announced that there's going to be season passes so it'll be kind of like the fortnite thing i'm i'm assuming you'll e e there'll be microtransactions for that type of stuff but then there'll be a bunch of cosmetic unlockables uh that will be unlocked as part of the season pass so um this is pretty amazing it just means there's going to be every single person and their dog will be playing halo uh multiplayer so there'll be no problems getting in finding matches and and getting into some really great combat yeah, and um, one of the one of the moments when they grabbed that melee weapon and they attacked somebody that that particular character looked like he was all dressed up like a samurai almost. So <laughs> yeah, like it shows the, like the cosmetic stuff still felt kind of. I mean, it looked he looked samurai looking, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it still felt like it fit within that world. Uh, yeah. And I think that that's a good thing. What's your next game? um it's really tough to pick only one more uh so i'm gonna go with redfall it was just the that was the one more thing kind of stuff well other than the fridge which was weird but <laughs> it was the, the one more thing game and this is a it looks like a squad based um hero based pve shooter where you have uh they showed off four characters that each have different powers one person has like magic telekinesis the other one has this crazy glowing eyeball and he has a sniper so i'm assuming that he can hit things without even thinking about it um and it just looks really awesome and there's vampires and there's all this really great stuff happening in a world that looks really really interesting so um this is coming out next summer so we have a little bit of time uh to let this game bake and see more of it uh but redfall just jumped up my list of hotly anticipated games for next year yeah i think that game looks really great i love the world building that they've got going on there uh the the whole idea of fighting these vampires and these vampires like it seemed like the different classes of vampire had different abilities that you had to yep. take into account and you know you you pair that with the fact that the different heroes have uh different abilities it seemed like there was a guy who one of the guys had like a, a pet robot that you could that, that like followed <laughs> yeah. you around as well. So you had all these different like class based stuff. And then the enemies have their own um, their own abilities that are dependent on what class they are. Right. I think that, that can make for some really compelling gameplay as well as a lot of replayability. So I think that that, exactly. that game looks like a lot of fun. Um, that, that was the next one that I was going to pick. So. Uh, since since uh, since you did that, I'm gonna go with uh, Starfield. Not because we oh, got yeah. to see any gameplay from it, but because I thought, well, I first off, I was surprised that they they gave us a release date. It's uh, November 11th next year, which is exactly yeah. 11 years since Skyrim. 
came out yep. uh, because that would that came out on 11 11 11 uh, right very big surprise I'm excited for this game mm-hmm. because of the pedigree of you know who made it but at the same time you know you have games like Fallout 76 that had not such a hot launch i'm glad that they're taking yet another year to continue working on starfield which has been under construction for a while now um the one thing that i will say is in in the reason that i'm bringing up starfield is because this was an amazing showcase of why you should have an xbox and why you should subscribe to game pass and even uh, i expected bethesda to be featured a lot more like, I felt like Bethesda, sure, they started it off with Starfield, but that was pretty much it. I mean, there was Fallout 76 expansions and some old uh, Bethesda games that are on Game Pass at this point. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I felt like Bethesda didn't make a peep, which was no. really strange to me. Yeah, I fully expected something about the next Elder Scrolls um, or a new Fallout or something, something new. All we got is some Fallout 76 add on like the next big add ons that are coming to the game. Um, I, I expected more big announcements like that, but we got a bunch of maybe just as big announcements because we don't they're they're new franchises but we got things like replaced we have the um the uh, what is it contraband the uh it looks like oh, contraband heist was, game. was bethesda uh no no i'm just saying other games oh, that were shown okay, off okay so so i didn't feel as bad with um like bethesda or microsoft not showing off like the new games that i was super excited about because there's all these other great games and i i think what what this presentation is going to show is that the biggest unsung uh thing to happen in gaming over the last little bit is game pass uh because the 27 games that were shown off in this event if for some strange weird things uh, game pricing has all cratered and you're even just paying 20 bucks a game if you don't have game pass just watching this presentation that's f- over 500 dollars worth of games that you get <laughs> as part of your subscription right yeah. like it, it's it's absolutely ridiculous and then you look over on the other side of the aisle some of the games that were shown off are free on xbox with the game pass or 80 dollars uh, or 90 dollars in canada because they're uh, 79.99 us now so right. they're um 89 or 69.99 us so they're 89.99 canadian and it's like oh my god it's going to be hard for me to to drop a hundred dollars on a new title when i could just pick up whatever the next game pass game is um microsoft's doing something pretty crazy right now Somebody said, I, I wish I could give credit. I saw this on Twitter yesterday or, or today, this morning. I'm, I'm not sure when I saw it, but somebody said Sony needs an answer to Game Pass because you can either spend $120 and get access to about 100 games right now as well as all those games in the future, or you can spend $120 for two games. And exactly. while Sony has some really, really good exclusives, I just mm-hmm. feel like Game Pass is so much better of a value proposition, especially, like, I think you and I talked about this recently. I don't care so much about exclusives that I miss out on because I have so much other stuff to play. Yeah, right. I would love to play Final Fantasy sixteen, but I'm not going to run out and buy a, a PS5 at this point for it because I I just have so many other games to play. So even if I miss out on that game, I've still had plenty of fun. Right. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I desperately want to get a PS5 because I want to play Ratchet & Clank, one of my favorite franchises. But everything else I could wait for because I have all this other stuff to play. Like Just as you said, like I started up uh, uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon today. I would never have paid $60 for that game, but I'm playing it now and I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, I think the, the, the biggest showing at E3 was Microsoft's Game Pass. It's just a ridiculous value. So far, because we still have the Nintendo uh, thing right. that's happening tomorrow. And That's look right. for a video from us about that as well. Um, mm-hmm. And, of course, we also have Capcom's thing that is happening in like an hour or so But at the time that we're recording this. Um, but here, here's, here's my question to everybody who's watching this right now. From the Xbox event, what was your favorite announcement? Leave a comment down below. And from the Square Enix event, what was your favorite announcement? 
uh, leave a comment down below. And if you haven't seen our coverage of the Ubisoft event, I did like a five minute quick uh, clip of just going through talking about the games that are coming out. And Lloyd and I spent about an hour uh, talking about all of like in depth, all of the Ubisoft stuff as well uh, that's coming to Stadia. That's Let us right. know what you think down below. Thanks for watching. And we're out of here. Say goodbye, Lloyd. Hey, later, everybody.